Good morning, Physics 30. I hope you guys are all doing well today. Today, on video number two, we're going to be looking at momentum. Now, this is going to be a the formula of the unit, essentially. This equation is the basis for pretty much everything that we are going to be working on this unit. Um, so fortunately, it is a nice, straightforward equation, and it's a nice, straightforward definition. So momentum, it's defined as the product of the mass and the velocity of an object. And one of the things that's cool about momentum is that it is also heavily linked to Newton's first law, so the law of inertia. So I remember as a kid, I did a lot of skiing and when I was younger, and I've always been tiny. So my brothers and I would be like in the tucking down the hill, last bit of the hill, trying to get as far as we could. So we didn't have to skate ski up the ski lift. And of course, my brother, larger than I was, he would be able, even though we start at the same velocity, he'd keep going. And I'd just peter out and stop. I have to skate my way over to the chairlift. So but even though our velocity was the same, he was able to continue going because he had more momentum because he had more mass than I do. So therefore, he had greater inertia. So remember that Newton's first law is that an object in motion is going to have a tendency to stay in motion and an object at rest is going to have a tendency to stay at rest. All right. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, your equation that is going to be the basis for this unit is P equals MV. Now I beg pardon about these wonky W's, uh, trying to get from a Word document to a PDF. It swapped out my lovely vector arrows for these weird wonky W's. So please, uh, I'm just going to replace those with vector arrows. And you can find this equation on your lovely data sheet, which is going to be the same data sheet that I gave you guys last year. So no worries on that front. So what we've got for you on your data sheet, all right there. Okay, you guys see your P equals MV? That is your equation. So P is your momentum. There are two sets of units, and we're going to be coming back to them to do the unit analysis to show you where they come from eventually. So we've got kilograms uh, times meter per second, so a kilogram meter second, um, per second, excuse me, or a newton second. M is mass in kilograms, V, velocity in meters per second. Now, absolutely vital, what you must know, momentum is a vector because V is the velocity. So that means you must have direction when I am asking for momentum. Unless the question asks, what is the magnitude of the momentum? And then you don't have to give me a direction. So, but if I just say, what's the momentum? I need a direction with that answer. Okay, guys? All right. Okay, so as I mentioned in our previous video, graphs are going to be a huge part of this particular course. And a lot of what we're going to be doing is relating our equations to graphs and using those to interpret what it is we're seeing. So today we're just starting with the patterns. We're going to be putting our equations into y equals mx plus b, but we're not going to be doing anything too crazy with it yet. We will be, trust me. Okay, so the first type of graph in which we can use to help us interpret momentum is we can use a position versus time graph. Always title your graphs, ladies and gentlemen, even if it's just a position versus time. Always title your graphs. And especially in university, they're going to ding you hardcore if you don't title your graphs properly. So, we would have our position in meters, and then we can have our time in seconds. So if we're going to have that with the graph, let's say something like that. Okay, nice linear graph. You calculate like the slope of that easily enough. Well, remember your slope. Now, once again, slope, huge, going to be a part of this. And this course, you don't have to memorize the equation. Uh, I would assume by Physics 30, you guys have done enough slope calculations that you do have it memorized, but you don't have to. It's right there. Okay, you guys see it? So you have your line, 
your slope and you also have your y equals mx plus b equation there. And you also have your um, trig equations and your sine and your cosine laws and area, all that good just generic math and geometry there. So remember your slope is your delta y over your delta x. Remember delta change in, okay? So on this, what would the slope equate? What would the slope give me? Velocity. Because when we look at our velocity is going to equal a change in dis, uh, excuse me, a change in displacement over a change in time. Well, here we've got our displacement here. We've got our time. So therefore, that your delta v is going to equal your slope. Your velocity will equal your slope. Well, if you have mass, you can get the slope and then you can use p equals mv. Okay. If you need momentum that way. So that's a possibility. So one way to use graphs to assist with calculating momentum. Okay. So the next way that we can use graphs to assist us is we can use a momentum versus a velocity graph. That's one other way. There's a ton of different ways we can represent this. You can do a, like a momentum versus mass. If you're going to be adding masses uh, to a cart or something, we're going to look at a bunch of different ways that we can do this graphically in a bit. So let's look at this one. Let's look at momentum versus velocity. Okay, well, if we're going to have our, I'm just going to write P here on my uh, axis. It's going to be easier for you guys to read. And velocity and the units are either kilograms per meters um, second or, or kilograms per meter second, kilograms meter sec, meters per second. It's a hard one to say for some reason today. And your velocity and meters per second. You could also write it as newton seconds. I don't care which. Um, they mean the same thing. We'll look at why later. So let us determine what the shape of this graph is going to look like. Okay. Well, we have P is equal to MV. Well, what we have here is P on the Y velocity on the x. Well, let's equate this to y equals mv to determine what type of graph we're going to have and what our slope is going to mean. Because remember, we're all about determining what the slope means. We did that uh, with distance time graphs and velocity time graphs last year in physics 20. Well, now we're getting real hardcore into what the slope means. So this is why and the V is on the X axis. Okay, so these in Y equals MX plus B, these are Y and X. Well, our mass, what does that give us in Y equals MX plus B? That gives us the slope. That is your M. I know it seems silly, M to M. Okay, I'm going to write this a bit neater. Oops, that's the, there we go. Now, what about the B? Is there anything added here? Well, no. So it's plus zero. So that would mean if Y equals MX plus B, zero is going to be your B value. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you that our, we're going to be going through the origin. Okay, there's going to be no shift on that Y axis. So ladies and gentlemen, if we are to draw this, well, it fits perfectly into y equals mx plus b like this. It means we are going to have a linear graph that is going to go through the origin. Okay. And love, ladies and gentlemen, we can also, let's look at this, what our slope is going to mean. Well, our slope is going to equal as usual, delta y over delta x. Well, our slope is the change in momentum, and our velocity is the, or our x, excuse me, is the change in velocity. So that means your slope is equal to 
momentum over velocity. Well, when you look at P equals MV and we divide out that velocity, guess what? We're left with mass. So, ladies and gentlemen, our slope is going to represent the mass of the object. Alrighty, oh? Okay. So, I know this is a kind of a lot to be starting with on uh, day one, um, but just a heads up, graphing is going to be the thing in Physics 30. We do a lot of graphing. All right. So if graphing was something that was really hard for you in physics 20, make sure that you come and see me so we can get you caught up with it. Um, I know that many of you guys uh, will have done physics 20 um, in the midst of the COVID shutdown um, back starting back in March and we're in August at the moment. So, well, while I'm filming anyway. So if you're having a hard time with this, make sure you come see me as at the moment of recording, we still have diploma exams. So I'm not going to have an ability to go over and redo physics 20 in the middle of physics 30. Unfortunately, it'd be great if we could, but reality. So make sure if you're having a hard time with any of this stuff that you make sure you really come see me. All right, y'all. All right. Okay, guys. So let us look at another skill of what we're going to be doing a lot of in physics 20. It's something, or physics 20, physics 30. So I've been doing a lot of physics 20 recording as well the past few days. So we're going to be looking at a ratio question. Okay. So this one, and the ratios are a huge part, huge part of physics 30. There is always one in the diploma and at least one. And we are going to be doing a lot of them uh, throughout the course. So this is another uh, thing that we worked on in physics 20, um, a skill that I know I emphasized. So um, once again, you have a hard time with these ratio questions. Uh, make, make sure you come and see me. Okay. All right, so ratios of what I also like to call math wizardry or math magic, something along those lines. So during one part of the liftoff of a model rocket, its momentum increases by a factor of four while its mass is halved. The velocity of the rocket is initially 8.5 meters per second up. What is the final velocity during that time interval? Okay, so we have some interesting stuff we got to do. Notice we only have our initial velocity and we only have the factors. So what we do as soon as you start seeing factors, we are going to be setting things up into original and modified. Okay, okay. So originally, we have momentum. Originally, we have mass, but we don't know what they are yet. They're just P and M. Okay, but we do have our initial velocity, okay, of 8.5 meters per second up. We also have our equation of P equals MV. So we're trying to find our final velocity. So let's rearrange this here. I'm going to divide up the m and velocity is going to equal p over m. Well, we know that our momentum is p, mass is m, we have our final v, okay? However, because p over m is equal to velocity, we can have v is equal to p over m as well, okay, which we have there. But v, look guys, v is 8.5. So our P over M can equal 8.5 meters per second up. Okay. All right. Well, as the rocket is launching away, its momentum increases by a factor of four. Now we're going to be using a fair bit of prime. Now what you see here is P prime, this little dash up at the top means prime. That means our second or after or modified version. Okay, so P prime, our modified prime, its momentum increases by a factor of four. That means P prime, whoopsie, is going to equal 4P. All right, 
Okay. Well, its mass is halved because a part of the rocket falls off. Standard in rocketry. So m prime or m modified is equal to either one half m or m over two. So you can use either one in your equations. Just make sure whichever one you use, it, it just fits mathematically. Okay. All right. So what we've got is now we're going to start doing some substitution. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, P equals MV. We are trying to find V, so we want V equals P over M. So that's what we're going to be working with. We're now going to substitute in these ratios. So P prime is 4P. So I'm going to substitute this P with 4P. And then we are going to substitute this with either M over 2 or 1 half M. It, it doesn't matter which one. You pick whatever makes you happy. Whatever floats your goat. Okay, and yes, I said goat on purpose, not boat. Because it's silly. And silly is fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, now let's sort this out mathematically. Because this 2 is under two dividing lines, what it really means is that that's going to be on the top. So let, let's get that sorted. So we're going to have 2 times your 4p over m. All right. Well, let us multiply this through and factor it out. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to factor out that 4 instead of multiplying it through. That's just going to be less of a pain. Well, if I factor out that 4, so it'd be 2 times 4 times p, which is divided by m. Okay, well, that 2 times 4 is p. Um, so I just x-ray the dog's asking to go outside. I will pause the video and I will be right back once I let her out. All right, we're back. So, ladies and gentlemen, where are we left off? Our V is equal to 8 times P over M. Well, I can write this like that, okay, as opposed to, I'm um, also just going to scroll down a bit here so I can have some more room to write. Oh, come on, computer. There we go. Okay. We can also write it as your V is equal to 8P over M, however you want to write it. But this way here is definitely easier to write it in that manner because then, well, guess what? Look at this. We've determined up here that P over M is equal to 8.5. So ladies and gentlemen, your speed is going to equal to 8 times 8.5 meters per second up. So once you put that in there and you do the math, you are going to wind up with a velocity of your 68 meters per second up. Now remember, because I asked for velocity, I need a direction. The direction hasn't changed. And as well, sig digs and units. Now. If you had Physics 20 with me last year, you're going to remember that A, you got to show your work, show your work, all the work, all the time. And you need to have your final answer with correct sig digs, units, and direction for your vectors. Um, you have any of those wrong, I deduct half a point for each. Um, I know it may seem extreme, but remember, guys, you do your math wrong. And if you're an engineer or an astrophysicist or something, people's lives are hanging in the balance of your physics. So you do a sig dig error and your bridge is going to collapse and people are going to die. So do your math, sig digs, sig dig save lives, guys. All right. So let's go and check our sig digs. Well, 8.5, those are our two sig digs and the factor of four and the factor of, um, half, those are absolute values, so we do not need to worry about sig digs for those. Okay? All right. So we have two sig digs. Please box your final answer or underline it or somehow communicate to me clearly that that's what you want me to mark as your final answer. Cool beans? Cool beans. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, let us do another question here. 
So a 20 gram ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters. Determine the momentum when it is halfway to the ground. Okay, this is kind of an interesting question. I, I like this. I like this quite a bit. So we've got to do some thinking here. Okay, let's start out by listing what we got. Well, we have a mass of 20 grams. Can we use 20 grams? No, we got to use kilograms. So therefore, we're going to multiply this by 10 to the negative 3 kilograms per gram. And we're going to get a mass of 0 0.02 kilograms. You have to use the right units, guys. Got to use the right units. Well, Let's also think about what we have here. So there's many different ways in which we could approach this. Um, but because we're halfway to the ground, I'd rather not use conservation of energy because you could use conservation of energy if you wanted to. But because we're dealing with uh, momentum, I'm going to choose to use acceleration because we're definitely accelerating as an all falls being dropped. We have acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared down. Okay. Now, as a ball's displacement is down, I'm going to choose to make down a positive value. So a positive direction for this question. Well, we're accelerating this far. Halfway to the ground is a distance of five meters. Okay, so when we have those values, you have been asked to calculate its momentum. We have the mass. Well, we need velocity. We've got acceleration. We've got distance. What's the other value implied here? Should be I. Keyword dropped. Think back to physics 20. Zero. Our VI is zero meters per second because of that keyword dropped. So we have our mass. We have accelerated acceleration, displacement, and VI. Well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to come to our handy dandy data sheet. Now I've highlighted the acceleration equations in pink. And the, you're going to pick one of these acceleration equations that is going to fit your scenario. The one that fits our scenario is Vf squared is equal to our Vi squared plus 2ad. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to rearrange this to get our Vf because we want to know its velocity at that final point, at that halfway point. So I don't even have to rearrange it. Sweet. VI is zero. Cancel that out. So our VF squared, oops, our VF is going to equal the square root of 2AD. Okay. And now, one, I'm going to pause here just so you guys know, uh, being Physics 30, I'm going to be re going through rearranging equations a lot quicker. Um, I just assume by this point that you are perfectly comfortable rearranging equations um, and that we just kind of do it. It's not really something I spend as much time with. Um, so if you are having a hard time rearranging equations, make sure you come see me so we can get you caught up with that because it's going to be huge. And I kind of rush through it a little bit because... I just more expect that you're comfortable with it by this point. But if you're not, make sure you come see me, OK? OK. So VF. I'm going to plonk in our numbers. 2 times your 9.81 times your 5 square root the lot. When it goes in your calculator, 2 times 9.81 times 5 square root. OK. Once you plonk that in your calculator, you're going to wind up with a VF of 9.9045 meters per second, dot, 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 dot. OK. Do we round here? No. On your diploma, lessons a hint, on your diploma, and therefore on my unit exams and quizzes you're going to have for me, you are going to, I'm going to be looking for, and even on assignments, guys, I'm going to be looking for exact answers. And how the diploma exam people, and so and, and also the most correct mathematically way to go, which is why they do it, is don't round until the last step. Keep your numbers whole, expanded, all the digits, 
okay? And use all the digits. On a your diploma exam, it is purely multiple choice and written, re written response. Let's not get started on how much that irritates me. I would love written response on there because you can actually really show what you know. So if you make a rounding error, if you round here and don't round at the end and you're off by 0.1 and you did everything off perfectly, you're still getting that one whole question wrong with no part points. Because that's how the diploma does it, that's how I do it on the multiple choice and numerical response. It sucks, I know. I don't like it, but I gotta prepare you guys for these exams and that's the, this is the best way that I can think of to actually do it. Um, so it's really important that you guys pay attention to these details, okay? All right. On my unit tests, I always give written response because I, I can't abide giving no written. I just, ugh. written's important. Life is not a multiple choice exam. All right. So, well, now that we have our velocity, we're not done yet. We are trying to find momentum. So, our P is equal to MV. I'm draw my vector arrows. And we have the mass, which we got earlier, so our 0 0.02 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by the velocity full number that we just calculated using all those digits. And you're going to get your momentum. So once you plunk that into your calculator correctly, you're going to get 0 0.198 dot 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 dot. All right. Final answer, making sure everything is ready to roll, nice and ready to present, ready to mark. We need to think about our sig digs, units, direction. Okay, so let's start with sig digs. Well, we've got 20 grams and 10 meters, so that's two sig digs. So I am going to put in our 1.98, one, two sig digs, look at that. And that's gonna round that up to 0 0.20 units, kilograms, meter per second. And then I said momentum, momentum is a vector, so that means I must have direction. I determined that positive is gonna mean down, so therefore I need to communicate down. Cool beans? beans. Alrighty, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys found that helpful and interesting, all that good stuff. Um, please do practice problems out of the workbook I will have given you guys in class. So here are some questions. Now these, remember these acceptable and inter intermediate or advanced experience, whatever, uh, they are kind of giving you the, or the challengers, they're giving you different levels similar to what you'd see as difficulty on the diploma. Um, all right, do your practice problems and I will talk to you guys later. No fires, injuries, or explosions.